Is yours, yeah? Is it yours? I think it's my fault. Oh! That's mine! Yeah. Do you like it, Bob? Do you like your playroom? Yeah. That's a camera. Yeah, neither it is. <laughs> back to my channel my name is Amanda and my channel is all about health and lifestyle and um, if you're new here you may not know that I've been doing some house renovations um, and it's now finally the time to actually show you their nearly end product so last week if you missed last week's video I showed you our kitchen we installed a new kitchen and um, the second big part of the project was actually doing a garage conversion as well so I explained before, we've been here um, for five years in this house, it's a new build house. And although it a, was a really lovely house, there was always things that we planned to do in the future. And when it got to about the five year mark and we had another little one coming up on the way, I'm 39 weeks pregnant today. Um, we decided, you know what, this is a good time now to try and get these things done before we add another person to the home. And I think also the nesting in me kind of kicked in too. Um, and so today we're doing the garage conversion. What we've made this room into is a playroom. Um, so it's a, a second living space, but it's really primarily for the kids. And when you see it, you'll see that this room is all about the kids. Um, right now I've got a two year old, Isabella. Um, and um, although the room isn't completely, completely finished, I wanted to show you it now because I could give birth any day. And once I give birth, I don't know how long it's gonna take me to get the room completely, completely finished. And so I just thought I'd show you it now and then you can give me a bit of feedback about what you think I should do with the final little touches and changes. Um, before I show you the room though, I just wanted to take you through just a couple of little things about the garage conversion. Um, so it was a single garage. Um, it was a good size garage, would fit a car in, but not like a, not like a big, SUV type car which is what I've got now and so we really stopped parking our car in there a few years ago um, and it was just becoming a storage place we had bikes in there and just random random things um, and so it wasn't really giving us that much apart from storage and so we decided we could actually use it as a room much better um, the only issue is the hardest thing I found about doing a garage conversion was finding where to put everything that you put in your garage and so we've done a few bits of work around the house um, along with this and it feels like every single room in this house has changed um, over the last couple of months since the start of the year to try and accommodate for these new spaces and so um, outside we made sure we've got like a big storage unit outside and a shed which we moved a lot of things into we had our loft boarded and so lots of things got moved into the loft um, and so we got it boarded, we got shelves put in there, we got better access to the loft. Um, and then we have a few different storage cupboards. And so upstairs we've got our linen cupboard properly kitted out with like shelving so we could use it more optimally. And also our hallway was very cluttered beforehand. Um, so with like coats and just random stuff. And I think there's a previous vlog from like last year where I showed you what our hallway looked like. And so we have a downstairs storage cupboard as well that we changed into um, more like a cloak area and it's just made the hallway so much brighter, so much more open. Um, so yeah, we did that. Oh, and finally, under the stairs, um, we didn't have a cupboard under the stairs, we just had like this void space. And so we've got someone to come in and actually change the under the stairs area. Um, and so we can actually lift the stairs up now and that's where we keep a lot of things like shoes and stuff that we actually kept in the garage before. Like I said, we kept some random stuff in the garage. 
And so um, hopefully we put in some little clips of the other areas of the house that we've changed a bit and transformed. And also I've recorded the process of the garage conversion as we went along. Um, it was really hard at first to find a contractor. Um, I think people, because of 2020, staying in your house all the time, lots of people want work doing, and so there's a lot of people that aren't available. And a garage conversion, although it has a massive impact on the space in your house, I don't think it's a really big job for a lot of contractors. And so finding someone to do a quote was difficult, but we found somebody, um, and I'll link down below um, the company that we use. They were really good. Um, as with all builders, they often have more than one job going at one time. And so even with that, I had a really strict time frame that I wanted the house done by because I was because I am pregnant and the baby's coming. And um, they said it was going to take around two weeks and it took about two and a half weeks. Um, the reason for that is, like I said, they weren't here every single day, but certain things you had to wait for. So um, when the floor got leveled and concreted, it needs time to dry, so that takes a few days where they can't do anything. And then waiting for things like the window to come in to be delivered, that also delayed things slightly. But really, it was a really smooth process. Um, it was very dusty, that's the only thing. But other than that, we're really, really happy with it. And at first, we felt like the room was a bit colder than um than we want it to be like it felt colder than the rest of the house but actually now that we've started using it a lot living in it you can't tell like the heating's not on now and i'm very comfortable um but yeah it's 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 definitely been great for us overall the cost everything together so the um the builders the flooring the decorating um the window the radiator everything as a whole this cost us ten thousand pounds to do um, and so when you think about the space that it gives you and the value that it can add to your home, I think that relatively it's quite a inexpensive or a lower cost renovation to do compared to like an extension or something. And it actually gives you quite a bit. So I'm going to stop going on about the room and actually show you it now. Let's get started. So I've sat to you just where the door is. So this is what you see when you first walk into the room. Um, like I said, this this whole room is a playroom, it's just for the children. And so I've tried to go for a bit of a Montessori kind of vibe in here. Um, everything's very accessible, we do toy rotation, and I'll take you through some of the areas that we've got going on here, and also some of the last minute pieces that we wanna try and sort out. And so over on the back, this back wall here, this is what I call like our um, home corner, our role play corner. And so, all of these, I got really excited about the playroom. <laughs> and so I ended up um, making a lot of this, putting all this together myself. Even though I was like really heavily pregnant, and my husband was like waiting for him, I just got impatient. And so um, I put together most of these things, which I'm really proud of. I do like doing a bit of DIY anyway, but with, my, with being quite heavily pregnant, I just think I did a pretty good job. But yeah, anyway, I'll tell you where everything's from. So um, first of all, you can see this little basket down here. We got this from Home Sense. There's a pair of them, one that sits in the living room. And in here, right now, it just has like miscellaneous little toys that she likes to play with. Um, but I think I might get another basket in the corner over there to put those in. And here, I want this to be like a little bit of a dressing up kind of basket for her with like different outfits and stuff that she can play with. Um, and so on this part of the wall here, I'm not sure what to put there. My mum said it would be a good idea to put like a um, notice board so we can put up their artwork and maybe put on some pictures of like them and their cousins and friends. And I really like that idea, but also I want to have a mirror in here. And so tell me what you think. Do you think we could put a notice board like here and then a mirror lower down because so they can see themselves if they're dressed up. And I know it's quite good for development with little babies when this one comes along. What do you think? Notice board. And mirror a bit too much just one and um, but that's going to be like the little dress up area here this is from aldi you can actually get aldi special aldi special buys now online and um, i saw this on um somebody's instagram and they told me where they got it from i just had to have it and basically it's a market store um and on here we've got the melissa and doug fruit and veg some of the chopping ones and then just some of like the food groups and her and her cousins love it. They go behind here and they actually get quite, they argue quite a bit actually over who's in with the shopkeeper. At some point I get her a little cash register, but yeah. And actually, if you turn it over around, 
It's also like a puppet show kind of thing. And um, yeah, they can go behind here. I'm gonna get some puppets, some like hand puppets. And you can write on here like the show name and time and everything. And I'm sure as she gets older, she'll quite enjoy this. So yeah, that's that. And then we got her cleaning things. This is the home corner. Um, so this Melissa and Doug cleaning stuff. And then we've got her a matching Dyson vacuum to the one that we have. She's had this for like, since she was one, I think. She loves it. And then this is the IKEA kitchen. Lots of people have this. And it's really inexpensive. I think it's like 60 pounds. And she loves it. The little pots and pans we've got for it at the moment, they were just this set from Smith's Toys. That's up there. And then she's just got her little doll that sits back here. Yeah. Right, so on this side is more of the Montessori kind of things that I was talking about. Um, having like the toys on her level and doing the toy rotation. Before she used to have like these baskets with just so many toys out all the time. And I found that she wasn't playing with them as well. And so since doing it like this and she has like one toy per little cubby, she's so much better with her playing. It's so much easier to play with her. You can hear her imagination going wild. And so I would highly recommend a shelving unit like this. But before I show you what's on here, I did just want to talk about um, this bit of the wall. I'm gonna put some artwork here. So like I've seen on Etsy, you can get some artwork where it's, um, what's it called? Um, yeah, so you get like letters, numbers, and then like a sign that says, let's play. And so that's what I'm thinking about putting here, three pieces of art for the playroom. But um, as you can see, this room, it's, I hope you can tell, because the light is going in and out as I'm moving around. But this room is really quite bright and it's because of how big the window is. So um, we've always, this, this new build, we're, 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 our new build builders were Red Row and they put really large windows into the home. That's one of the things that we loved about it. And so when we said we we're doing the new, this garage conversion, we had to make sure we had a big window. And we've got a massive window. And even though this room is north facing, our garden and our kitchen is south facing. It's still bright in here, even on the gloom yesterday. Today is quite gray and it's still quite nice and bright. But yeah, so over here, what I do is I've got one toy in each of the boxes. Um, and I'll take you through a few of them. Um, so this is just like a stacking toy. It's just like boxes that stack on top of each other. Um, and there's just lots of little puzzles. And what I always make sure to do is not to have it made up, so she has to make them. Um, and she really enjoys going through these. Then, these are her instruments. She loves to get these out, have a little play in the mornings. And then she's just like a little doctor's set. Of course she's got to have doctor sets, she's got more than one. Um, but yeah, like a little doctor's set, and she loves playing with this as well. But there's a little Apple speaker under there that's controlled by Siri. And it's really nice because we can play music in here whenever she's playing. Um, we don't have a TV or anything in here, that's why that comes in useful. But also what we do, um, we're having trouble getting her upstairs for bedtime. And so now we have a song that plays at seven o'clock and she knows that it needs bedtime. And so <laughs> we made sure we have a speaker in here. So she's in here, the music comes on and she knows it's time to go upstairs. And actually it's really, really been helping the last few weeks. Um, and then on top, there's just some more little toys. So she's got her Lego blocks here, um, this little rainbow toy. She, was, she does all sorts with it. She plants the fire, she plants its food. And then this little box here, she absolutely loves. It's just full of little figurines of her favorite like TV characters and stuff. Um, she plays this all the time. She carries it around with her. She loves it. And so the only other thing I want to add to here, because obviously all of this gets rotated around with different toys, um, is at Ikea there's a um, dollhouse and so I want to have a dollhouse that sits on here all the time with the little figures and she can do a bit more role play with that um, and then the final thing that is a permanent thing that stays out all the time even when we're rotating is this little box here so it says on there Chisholm's little library with the Chisholm's and basically I take out about between five and ten books rotate them around every couple of weeks and this is what she can access and read and we'll add like different ones for baby as well and babies here and i guess the final thing on this side is the blinds 
We just went for some plain blackout white roller blinds and the reason for that is although there's no TV in here, what we are planning to do is have a projector so that when the kids are over or you know there's like adults and kids here when they get older they can still have like a movie night in here if they want to um, and so that's going to be like our projector screen basically. We'll see how it works. And then we'll just move on to this next side. Okay, and so over here, I hope you can see me okay. I know the lighting and things. But over here is the corner where we put the big toy. This gets rotated round as well. At the moment, she's got her ball pit. She got this for her first birthday from her godmother. And so I need to ask her where she actually got this from. And I'll try and link it down below. But right now she's the ball pit before the trampoline was here. And then I want to get things like a pickle triangle, which is like a little climbing frame and a little slide that can go here as well. And then some of the, I'm sure when baby's here, some of the bulkier baby toys will go there, such as like the jumper and stuff. But this gets rotated around with a big toy. And then this is like the little table and chairs, arts and craft area. Um, right now there are two, this is from Ikea, and there are two, um, chairs and then also two stalls. The reason I've got so many is just because although I've only got one kid at the moment that will sit down there, I've got nieces, nephews, friends, cousins, so I want them to have a space that they can do there. Um, and on this wall there are some floating like drawers that you can get from Ikea and that's what we're going to be getting to put up here and that's where all the arts and crafts are going to go. So things like Play-Doh, kinetic sand, painting, drawing, paper, it's all going to go up onto this wall. So it's not accessible to them, but it's easily accessible to us to take out when we want to use it. Um, yeah, and that's kind of it for what's in the room. The only thing I didn't mention, I think, I haven't mentioned, but you can see over there, we do have a camera in the room. I said it before, I like to spy on my kids. <laughs> um, there will be times where she might be playing in here by herself, or the kids might be playing in by themselves. So I'm cooking or anything it's nice to have the camera so I can make sure they're being safe and so that's the main area with all the toys and everything like that and um, I did forget to say the shelves that are down at the bottom those are the Calyx shelves from Ikea and um, there's just one more area to show you and this is one that actually needs quite a bit of work on and um, because I need to organize in it basically but until baby comes I don't know how long it's gonna take me to do and maybe we can do a whole video about organizing toys but I will show you that in a second. But also, um, one last thing in terms of decorations in here. On this wall above, above where the big toy goes, I was thinking about getting a sign there that says like play or let's play. Or I've seen ones that say like where the wild ones play or a little quote. What do you think? What would you put on that wall there? Am I putting too many things on the wall? Let me know. Okay, the lighting's much better now with some face in the window, but this is the final area of the playroom. So here, this door here, is the door that you come in through from the hallway where you slide off. And this door at the back is our storage cupboard. So um, we did convert the whole garage, but we left quite a bit of space at the back to put in a really large storage cupboard. And that's where all the other toys are hiding away. Um, and actually some extras from the kitchen as well, like some, oh, um, like a little pantry stock. That's where they all are, and it really moves organising. I'll let you have a little peek, but it's a complete mess in there right now. But yeah, all our extra books, all our extra toys, everything is in there. Um, but because obviously adults are being here, and you need somewhere else comfortable to sit to, we were thinking about doing like a little reading corner with like pillows on the floor. But actually, when I'm in here and I'm breastfeeding the baby and I just want to watch her play, I need a sofa. And when it's movie night, we need a sofa. So we got this from HomeSense. I think it was £300. Just a nice little two-seater. Grey, quite easy to clean. I may get some pillows for this chair as well. Um, yeah, I probably will get some pillows for it. And then there at the top, we've got a shelf. These fo This floating shelf used to be one of two that was in the kitchen before it was done. Um, the other shelf is now upstairs in our office um, slash guest room. Right now, we've got some really sad cactuses up there and like a little faux plant and some statues we got from Jamaica. But um, I don't think I'm gonna add too much more to it because the projector will go up there. But I do wanna get a sign that says Isabella and baby number two's name. That's like Isabella and Beeps um, playroom. And so that's gonna go there and maybe some cushions to go here. 
and that's it really with the room um, let me just show you the storage cupboard I don't know if you're ready for this. This is the storage cupboard. When I say it's a mess in here, I mean it's a mess. We have put shelves up, and so you can see extra books and toys and shelves go all the way up there. That's for our pantry stuff. We've got another little shelving unit here, which has more toys on. Her easel's there, which we take out when she wants to draw on it. We've got a play mat, and the, it goes quite far back. You can see like our, that's our jumper room. The high chairs there. It's oh the trampolines there. It all needs organising. So yeah, and actually something we didn't think of when we were doing the garage conversion was um it's really difficult to know exactly what you're going to need, and we didn't think about putting a light in here. And so what we did in our loft is we got these stick-on LED lights that are motion censored, and we're going to put some in here as well, so it turns on when we walk in. But yes, this is my little cupboard of shame. And at the back, you can see our brooms and everything there. Boxes that need thrown away. Oh, let's just shut the door. And so guys, that's it. That's the garage conversion. Um, if you have any questions at all, please leave them down below. Um, I will answer them as best I can. I forgot to mention the rug in here, which I think you've seen a few glimpses of. That's from Home Sense as well. And the colour on the walls, I can't remember for the life of me, and so I will link it. Um, I'll put it on the screen here when I remember, or I'll link it in the description box. Um, but yeah, what do you think? Let me know about your decor suggestions in here. Um, and like I said, any questions, just ask. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe and share this with family and friends, anyone you think might be inspired by the playroom. Um, if there is a space in your home that you can create a dedicated play area, it doesn't need to be as big as this, it doesn't need to have as many toys, but even if it's just like a shelving area where you can rotate toys, I've seen a massive difference in how my two year old plays. And having this space just makes it easier for everyone. When my mum comes over to look after Isabella, she plays with her better because there's just so much to do, but not overwhelmed with so many toys. Um, when the kids come over, it's just all a lot easier. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and until next time, bye.